today we are beginning with time value of money. And um, time value of money is very important because it cuts across, I mean, the, it, it is the very basics of financial management, okay? It's the very, very basics of financial management, like time value of money. If you do financial management without time value of money, then there's a problem. And those of us in accounting, if you are in accounting class, you realize that even later when you get to um, your third semester, okay, when you are doing like typical, typical accounting, business valuation and all those things, and even some of you have been doing it, do it in accounting theory and stuff like that, you realize that we employ the concept of time value of money. And more especially for the finance people, time value of money is foundation for almost all the feather, all the feather finance courses you do. Okay, like um, financial market and institutions, which you do in block three. Like another course, like uh, international finance. Like when you, when you get to your third semester. By then you realize that if you didn't understand time value of money, then there'll be a very big problem. Okay, so whether you're an accounting person or you're a finance person, please pay attention to time value of money. It is like the very foundation. If you miss it, you are going to miss so many other things in your other electives. Now in the time value of money, we are going to talk about what it is. We will talk about lump sum payments, you talk about the concept of annuities. You talk about annuities that grow. And then we will talk about amortization schedule. Okay. Now I sent, just before the class, I sent some PDF documents. It's like a financial table. So we are going to make use of it today. Okay. Yes. I, I mean, just before the meeting, I sent it through your course web. So I'm sure by now, if you don't have it, it means probably you've not looked at your page or maybe the course rep have not sent it, which I, I doubt. So I, I've also sent some financial tables, which we will use in time value of money. Okay. All right, so let's begin. Now, what is time value of money? Now, I want you to understand that the value of money changes over time. Think about it carefully. Like some years ago, like, like let's say um, in the year, let's say 2008, all right? I think the new currency came in 2007. So let's say somewhere around 2008, okay? I'm sure that we could buy a ball of kinky for a certain amount. Maybe in 2008, we can buy a ball of kinky for um, 10 pesos, like that's the then one city, as in one, one cities, but then it became 10 pesos, right? But now, if you want to buy a ball of kinky, now it costs, depending on where you are, it costs from one city, 50 pesos, to two cities, three cities, five cities, and stuff like that. So this simply means that the value of money, it changes over time, okay? The value of money changes with time. So now a ball of Kenke is like one CD, 50 pesos, two CDs. And those days when you had like one CD, you can even buy about 10 balls of Kenke because one was like 10 pesos. So, it means that if I give my money to somebody, let's say in 2022, this year, and the person has to pay me back in about five years time. So let's say I give, I give somebody 5,000 cities, okay? And in 2027, the person will have to pay me back my money. Now the person cannot pay me back the same 5,000 cities again. That cannot happen because if the person pays me back that same 5,000 CDs, it means that I'm, I am, I mean, the person is virtually telling me that over the period, the value of the money has not changed. However, the value of money 
changes with time. So it means that if the person is going to pay me back my money in five years' time, the person will have to pay the 5,000 CDs plus the interest. If the person does not pay me interest, my money would have lost value. So in this slide, it says that time allows you the opportunity to postpone consumption to earn interest. So technically, what the time is doing for me is that I will not spend my money. I'm postponing the spending of my money. And then the person who borrowed my money will pay me back later with interest. Because if the person does not pay me back with interest, my money would have lost value in five years' time. So technically, technically, the interest payment, okay? So technically, the interest payment serves as a compensation for, so it serves as a compensation for opportunity cost. Opportunity cost. It also serves as a compensation for risk. It also serves as a compensation for inflation. That is why people have to pay interest. Because if I give my money to somebody, okay, I could have used the money for something else. But because I gave the money to the person, there is an opportunity cost. Again, if you give your money to somebody, there is high risk attached to you. What if the person does not pay? or the person doesn't pay you back on time. So interest also covers risk. That is why when you are going for a loan at a bank, if they assess you and you are very, very risky, they will charge you high interest, okay? I mean, that's the irony about going for loans. Some people think that, no, that shouldn't happen. But it makes a lot of sense because if you are going for a loan and you are very risky, like, when they assess you and then your, 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 your credit history is very bad, okay, you are very risky, you have to pay a very high interest such that the, the bank can recover majority of the money from you before you, you change your mind that you will not pay, okay? And also, interest rates compensate as for what? Inflation, inflation, because your money would have lost value. Now, time value of money simply explains the fact that a CD today will not be of the same value next year. And what are some of the reasons for that? And I've given you some of the reasons, okay? Because of the risk, if you give your money to somebody because of the risk, because of inflation, and even because of um, opportunity cost. So what does time value of money computation helps us do? Time value of money computations actually helps us to convert the current value into what? Future value. So if I have 5,000 CDs today, okay, and I give my money to somebody, how much must the person pay me back in about five years' time? That is what we call future value, future value. So the concept of time value of money, when we do the calculations, the calculations allows us to convert current value into future values, okay? And the, and the vice versa also holds. The computation allows us to also convert future value into current value, okay? That's the other side of the story. It also allows us to convert future values into what? Current value. And some of these things are very practical, very, very practical. Let's say somebody promises you that he'll pay you 5,000 CDs in, let's say you've won a lottery, okay? Let's say you, you won a lottery. And then because of the money, the money is big. 
Okay, maybe you went to stake Lotto and then you won. The money is very big. And then the National Lottery Authority is telling you that, okay, because the money is very big, let's pay you the money in five years' time. We will not pay it now because maybe the, the money is very big. So it will take some time for us to accumulate and pay you. Now, if they want to pay you in five years' time, okay, they must pay you a bigger amount than if they would have paid now. Okay, so sometimes if somebody tells you, okay, in five years' time, I'll pay you 5,000 CDs, you must be able to also value that 5,000 CDs in five years' time. You, have, you must be able to value it now. Or you must know the current worth of that 5,000 CDs that you would have received in five years' time. Okay, so converting future amounts to today's term, we call it present value. So present value is simply when you convert a future amount into today's value. So if somebody will pay you 5,000 CDs in five years time. If you want to know the worth of that 5,000 CDs now, we are talking about present value. And the time value of money calculations it depends on the frequency of the cash flows, okay? It depends on the frequency of the cash flow. And I'll explain to you. Now, sometimes, the example I just gave, okay, it is a lump sum. So let's say we are zero, one, two, three, four, five. This is the year, the timeline for the years. Let's say this is the timeline for the years. This is the timeline for the years. And somebody wants to pay you 5,000 CDs in five years time. Now learn this from me today. In, any, in financial management, when we say year zero, okay, we mean now, all right? So learn it today. Anytime you hear year zero in financial management, it means now, like now. Anytime you hear year one, it means in one year time. So we are in um, September, 2022, all right? So now, now it is year zero. But September 2023 will be year one, as in, in one year time from now. Okay. So in financial management, whenever we say year zero, we mean now, like now, now, presently. And year one means one year from now. Year two means two years from now. Year three means three, three years from now, and etc. Now, sometimes somebody can tell you, okay, I'll pay you 5,000 CDs in five years' time. This 5,000 CDs becomes a lump sum. It's a lump sum. It's one-time payment. However, somebody can tell you that, okay, I'll pay you 500 CDs every year. I'll pay you 500 CDs every year. Somebody can tell you that. I'll pay you 500 CDs every year for the next five years. Now, if you look at this, it is different from when somebody pays you 5,000 CDs once. So if somebody pays you 5,000 CDs once, it is called a lump sum. However, if somebody pays you a fixed amount at a regular interval, like the second example I'm giving, 500, 500 CDs every year for the next five years, that concept is called annuity, annuity, annuity. So some of you, your salary is an annuity. Like typical example of annuity is our salary. They pay us almost, unless maybe with time you get promotion, they pay us almost a fixed amount at regular interval. And that regular interval is monthly. And those of us that have children, maybe in secondary school or, um, you know, wherever, or maybe universities, 
we almost always give them an annuity payment every month. So every month we remit some money to them. Okay. Some of you have relatives abroad. They have made it their, you know, their, I mean, they've made it a point that every month they will send you a fixed amount of money. So the key word about annuity is what? Fixed amount, fixed amount at a regular interval. So in financial management, when you hear the word annuity, when you hear the word annuity, it means you are being paid a fixed amount at regular interval. It's called annuity. And when we are calculating present value and future value of these things, how we calculate present value and future value of lump sum is different from how we calculate that of annuity. That's why I'm taking my time to explain what these things are. Number three is the concept of perpetuity. So sometimes annuity has, so the difference between annuity and perpetuity is that annuity does not have, sorry, annuities have terminal point. So for annuity, we can receive 500 CDs every year for the next five years. It's an annuity. It has a terminal point. The terminal point is the fifth year. After fifth year, case close. That's the terminal point. After the fifth year, case close. But when it comes to perpetuity, perpetuity is a fixed amount as regular interval, but it is forever. So when you see a question that says that, oh, we are receiving 500 CDs forever. It means that we are receiving 500 CDs every year. Okay, sorry, every year. So 500 CDs every year forever. What it simply means is that it is not an annuity. If an annuity, they will say 500 CDs every year for the next five years, or let's say for the next even 10 years, it has a terminal point. At some point, we have to stop. But when it comes to perpetuity, perpetuity is when you receive a fixed amount at a regular interval, but it is forever. And somebody will be wondering, how does that happen? There are some financial instruments like that. There are some shares. When you go and buy, the condition is that maybe until you die, or maybe, yes, until, even when you die, you even have um, beneficiaries. So until the company falls up, so, so far as the company continues to exist, you receive that amount. So when you receive a fixed amount forever, like at a regular interval, but it is forever, we call it a perpetuity. In America, there is some investment product called a console because something a console. You can just read about it. Console. A console is an example of perpetuity. It's an investment product that allows you to receive money forever. 